the coordinate grid 2-4 practice and problem solving on envision for sixth grade math we're going to learn all about the coordinate grid and graphing on the coordinate grid and eventually get to distance we had just learned in 2-3 practice and problem solving all about absolute values and for absolute values that's going to help us find the distance between two points which we'll eventually get to hey right here it says graph the point one negative seven so the one this is the x this is the x coordinate and the negative seven that's the that's the y coordinate i'm going to go over some things that are really going to help us here for example this is a uh, quadrant one this is quadrant two this is quadrant three and this is quadrant four so quadrant one here quadrant one will have a positive x see the x and a positive y coordinate uh, quadrant two will have a negative x and a positive y quadrant three will have a negative x and a negative y and quadrant four will have a positive x and a negative y let's get to graphing it now first you do the x coordinate so that uh, that one we're going to go over one and I'm just going to drag my thing over one and then up seven no down seven because that says negative seven so we're going to be in quadrant four here oh look that was eight so there it is thank you I hope you're having a wonderful day here as we're learning about the coordinate grid and distance and two dash four topic two Hope you did well in your mid-topic assessment. Uh, you will not receive any credit for this attempt until you have checked your answer. Okay, we'll do that. What? What just happened, folks? What? Stop it, guys. Okay. Five, four. So. First, you go on the x-coordinate, over 5, and up 4. What quadrant are we in, guys? That's right. This is quadrant 1. Okay, we checked it. Are we okay? When that thing pops up, I'm like, what? You guys like that, too? All right. The ordered pair is negative 3, 7. So first, we go over negative 3. It's kind of like two number lines perpendicular to each other. And up 7. All right, you guys doing a good job on this too? All right, over one, down five. Over one for the x-coordinate, and then down five for the y-coordinate. Oh, shoo. Good. Okay, now we're getting into rational numbers. And remember, rational numbers can be put in the form of A over B. Hey, let me show you. Let me show you why this is a rational number. So, uh, negative 1 and 5 tenths can be put in the form of, if I convert it to an improper fraction, that would be 15 tenths. And 15 tenths is in the form of A over B, where B is not a zero. And that's what a rational number is. See that? It can be put in the form of a fraction. And that's what a rational number is. And these are rational numbers. Because they're like, think of them as like fractions and decimals. Right, guys? All right. So negative 1.5 is negative 1, one and a half. So look at this. See how we're counting here? It goes at negative a half, negative one, negative one and a half, negative two. You see how that works, guys? And now up 3.5. So there's one. See, I have to go up two to go one because it's counting by halves, guys. And then three and then 3.5. So hopefully you see how that works. Let me show you again. So you have to go up four to get to two. So that means these are halves. So a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and then that's three and a half, guys. Okay. And we're in quadrant two, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. 
and negative 5 on the x coordinate. Oh, it looked like I went over 5, but negative 5 is way over here, guys. You see that? And then down 5 and a half. Oh, I almost went over there. So that would be negative 5, but 5 and a half is right there. Oh, go down one more. It's hard. I think a mouse, using a mouse would be easier. What do you think, guys? <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to name this, this uh, ordered pair here. Looks like it's going over, um, I'm going to do the x first, negative 5, 5, negative 5, 5. So here's how we do that, guys. We come down here. See that? Look what I did here. Do you see what happened here? And we go over 8 for the x corner first, and then up 0, or down 0. So 8, 0. Ooh, I did it again. Come on, Jason. All right, for p, the order pair for point p, we go over. See how it's going by half snow, guys? So look at that. That's going by half. So that's negative 3 and 1 half. And then negative 3 and 1 half. This is quadrant 3 it's in. And eventually you'll know what quadrant it's, it's in because um, two negatives, like a negative x and a negative y, guys, will mean that... It's in quadrant three, and you'll eventually start to know all that. <clears throat> These are going by half two, and then it's two and one half, not quite three, and up two and a half. Both positives, quadrant one. And a half, guys, equals 0.5. So that's what I'm doing there, 2.5. You, you could put 2.5, I, th I think you could. Okay, so now you, the market square is at the origin. Okay, now we're going to get an absolute value and distance. Use the dots as the coordinates of the buildings. Which building is located in quadrant three? All right, let me tell you what the what the uh, quadrants are. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. We want to know what building is at quadrant three. Roman numerals. That's the firehouse. See how I had to scroll down for that? A lot of students missed that part. Which two places have the same x-coordinate? Look at that. <clears throat> so here are the x-coordinates. Anything in line with the doctor's office? No. Anything in line with the school? No. Anything in line with the library? Well, almost the pool. Anything in line with the pool? The clubhouse. You see how the x-coordinate here is 11 for the pool, and the x-coordinate is also 11 for the clubhouse. And when you have these squares, that means there's a, there's two answers. The city council wants the location of the entrance to a New York City park to be determined by the reflection. Ooh, the reflection. That's where it flips. Over either the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate. And I'll teach you some reflection rules. So it looks like we're reflecting city park to be determined 
flexion of the school entrance across the y-axis. So we're going to reflect the school across the y-axis, guys. All right, you see this here? The school is at 5, 5. So the school is at 5, 5, guys. Now when we reflect it, it's like folding in half like a butterfly. The When we reflect over the y-axis, the x-coordinate becomes its opposite. So opposite of 5, this goes back into like, 2, 1, and 2, 2. Opposite of 5 is negative 5. So it'll be right here, guys, at negative 5, 5. So when you reflect, this is important, you might want to write, write this down. When you reflect across the y-axis, the x-coordinate becomes the opposite, and the y-coordinate stays the same. When you reflect across the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same and the y-coordinate becomes its opposite. Let's see if that holds true here. We'll go from quadrant 1 to quadrant 2 and we reflect. And that will be, I'm just going to put a parenthesis, negative 5, 5, close parenthesis. Does that work? Thank goodness it works. Okay, use the map to complete parts A and B. The market square is the origin. The origin is 0, 0, by the way. Use the dots as coordinates of the map. Okay, which building is located in quadrant 2? Okay, quadrant 1, quadrant 2. Looks, let me just go over these again for you to be complete. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, doctor's office is in quadrant 2. Of course, they don't show it here, right? You got to scroll down. Some of the things you learn from being in the sixth grade for 13 years. Which two, one of these days I'm going to graduate from sixth grade. Which two places have the same X coordinate? Okay, the X coordinate. Well, here's the X coordinates. Do you see here? These two have negative seven as the same X coordinate. Doctor's office. Firehouse. Okay, am I done? Am I done? I got one more problem. The market square is the origin. And this means four, guys, quadrant four, because if this is before the V, the V is five. If it were after, it would be six, but that means quadrant four. It's not every day we learn about Roman numerals. But they typically show the quadrants and with Roman numerals. Quadrant four. Again, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Looks like we got the uh, library and the doctor's office there. The library and the doctor's office. Which three places have the same X coordinate? Select all that apply. Okay. Here's the X axis. So here are all the X coordinates. Let's go up here. Yeah, this one has a 10, that has a 10, and this one has a 10, which is the library. Library Swimming Pool Clubhouse. I hope we get to do another reflection one. Those are fun. It's a transformation. And it looks like we're all done. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for learning about the Cornet Grid on 2-4 Practice and Problem Solving. Bye.